important to go live on. Okay. One thing I wanted to show you in this webinar before we get too far here is with the middle school, middle school, with the middle school, um, Students got Raspberry Pi that you're all gotten by now. Everybody should have a Raspberry Pi. If you came to the labs, you, they were handed out then. And Liam Snodgrass already took his Raspberry Pi. The Sense Hat data that comes with the Raspberry Pi used to be called Astro Hat. It has temperature sensors, humidity, and pressure, so you can make your own weather station on it. And here it is. I'll show you his video of this. We made it work. Let me go ahead. Well, let's go back to rewind. So he started up. Uh, this is off his Raspberry Pi. You can see it's starting up right now. He's loading a program, sensing hat. And right here to your left is your temperature, humidity, and um, gas pressure. Yeah, that's a million bars. And you can look it over a time frame. You can see it spike. It would have been fun, not for people in the storm, obviously, but it'd be fun next time you get this running and there's a bad storm, you're able to track on that storm what the pressure is doing. You're going to find that when storms come through, for the most part, there's a lowering of pressure as a general rule. Okay? But this was just done with your Raspberry Pi. So you didn't realize it, but you already have a weather station now. All right, now, we did HTML. We're going to get out of that now. We're going to go into Inkscape now. And there's a couple of things that we're going to do on Enmodo, et cetera, here all in a minute. All right, now, this is what the desktop LEDs are starting to look like. Let me see. I'm going to do a view percent. We'll see this. Move this over. See if there's any questions. Get going on. I can't see your screen. Well, uh, well, there we go. That's just great, Tom. Let's see why it's not showing my screen. Let's try it out. Can you see my screen now? I have no video. It is broadcasting, so let me see what's going on. Can you see my screen now? Raise your hand. All right, do you see the, yeah, good. We've got the, here's the, um, all right. Here's the LED desktop lamp, whatever we want to call it, all right? Great, everybody can see it now. Let me go back and show you then real quick the weather station. This was done on Raspberry Pi. He's doing it on this Raspberry Pi. That's the Raspberry Pi startups. That's his startup screen. All right. Using data view here, tiles. Watch this. Your Raspberry Pi that you've got now with the weather hat has temperature, it's humidity, and it has pressure. All right. Let's put everybody's hands down. Okay. And it's just pretty cool. So go on your hat sometime. You need to see that. The hat was this thing right here that went home with your Raspberry Pi. All right. Now, getting back to this, and we've gotten in the mirror material to start making these. LED Infinity Mirror. Just remember, a hey. Well, I'm glad to tell you, so I can't do much. I understand, Laura. We will record these. I will upload them. It might take overnight, but you will have them uploaded. So just hang in there, okay, kiddo? And everybody, we're going to take some time to install some software a little bit. So that way, that may take up a little bit of our time. We just learned that it's just sometimes easier to have people there. But just so you can all see on the screen, this kind of table, this is just a simple mirror. Yours is going to be, have a combination of being able to mirror in a table if we want to. All right, so let's raise your hand. So some of you guys have got it, so I know how many of us. Good. Mr. Povich already has it. That's great. 
Raise your hand if you have Inkscape. Some of you do. I know you do. If you've had me for a while, you do. But, all right, great. Let me see how many we've got here. We got half do and half don't. So now's the time to go ahead and get this down. Um, I'll also show you some other things that we'll do. Um, before we get going on to Inkscape, so we have Inkscape. I'm going to talk about where you can go to download it all here in a moment. It's a vector program. Let's just talk about this. We mentioned this in the lab, but I want to mention it again, so it can't say it enough to you. Inkscape is a vector program. We can use it on the vinyl cutter, the laser cutter, and the CNC machine. A lot of the digital manufacturing you see today use vector type files. We can use it on the other mills. All right. It's made up of paths, which are known as nodes, and with locations known as nodes that we can pull back and forth. But it's all a mathematical description. All right. Well, you can update your X, you can update your Inkscape, you can update some other things for us. Vector graphics, on the other hand, are raster formats. It's what we use to raster or to engrave or mark. All right. So. We have these primitive, simple geometric shapes such as point lines, curves, polygons, and combine and represent a larger, complex thing. So we take all these lines and dots, and we can draw cool graphics like the little lion cub. We're never really going to be able to do photos. Do a painting, that's bitmap or raster. Do not, you wouldn't use vector for that. But here's the power of it. If you blow that up, you can see high resolution right here. Terrible right there. All right. And if you've ever done scratch, as many of us have, you've seen it. That if you use the vector graphic, it looks like this when you blow it up. Bitmap, not so much. The other thing is, it uses less space, so it's used in a lot of animations. You're, you know, they show in fonts and billboards, but the letters on your typewriter use vector graphics. That's why your letters can go from 24 points to 48 points, right? So same thing there. Now, let's all see this. Since we have different people have done it, I will show you where to get it. And then um, I'm going to have you look on it in Moto, too, because that way I want to make sure everybody's linked to get our videos when they upload. So you're going to go to Inkscape, and it's at inkscape.org, and download it. Um, we can also go here. Let me see here. Go to your high school one. We have this Paris Loco. That will take you to download that. I will also tell you, here it is, reminder, let me get that up here. Reminder, for those that normally have Thursday labs, we are going to have our lab next Tuesday. One time we're going to mess this up. All right. I believe um, that would be this week. There's a religious holiday for this week. There's a problem. We've got two Thursdays in a row at Charlotte Latin where we do our, our Fab Lab deck. So we're going to go ahead and move it till Tuesday of next week at 7 o'clock. So I right, just make sure you know that. Not, not tomorrow, next Tuesday, the 26th, not the 19th. All right. Does that all make sense? Now... Got that. This is inkscape.org. I'm going to put everybody's hands down. If you got it too, if you don't have Inkscape, please go ahead and download, start downloading it right now. Also understand something. As we go downloading Inkscape, I'm going to go on this presentation slide. 
you are also, if you're a Mac user, use an X Quartz. All right. All right. Okay. What happened to Thursday? We may have to. Shoot. Yeah. Well, it's not that one, but you got the right. There's a religious holiday. Which version do we download? The most current version, Windows or Mac? Oh, I'm sorry about your computer being light. No, 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 no. This is not for the Raspberry Pi. You're not running, though, I guess you could on a Raspberry Pi. You're putting, ras you're going to put Inkscape on your own computer. You could, you could do the Linux version of it, but put Inkscape on your own computer. All right. Okay, so don't, does everybody understand that? We're putting Inkscape on the computer you're doing this webinar with. Windows or Mac, depending on your computer, Levi. Windows or Mac, just depend on your computer. This is a Mac. I download the Mac version. Windows, I go ahead. I don't only need X Quartz for the Mac. Raise your hand when you've downloaded this thing. Yes, if you miss a little bit of a lab, John Mark, remember the lab is this not tomorrow night, but next Tuesday. If there's a problem, we'll figure out a way to make it up for everybody. Don't worry. You're all gonna get to make your impact. So Harry, come on, Laura, Mateo, Zillium, if you've got Inkscape on your computers, let's put them on there. We won't be changing other dates. Just uh, September, it's always harder. School has parents' nights and religious holidays and everything interfere. All right. Now, so you're going to download X Quartz. You may have to install the X Quartz. Um, the Mac users have to install X Quartz, start up the computer to get the Inkscape to run. So you may have to jump off for a few moments on this. And I'm sorry if you have to, but you'll probably have to do it. When you install it, it may take a while, like several minutes. Okay. It will take several minutes before the main window is displayed while the font caches are built. You have all these different fonts, and it's got to go through your computer um, for the different typesets and fonts you have for your word processor and stuff or graphics, different programs. Don't worry, Laura. Install it later. Don't worry. This is all being recorded. You should be all set to go. I'll put up the PDFs as well. While we're recording on that, let me show. I'm going to pause my screen just for a second to see, show you this, guys. Give me one second. I'm going to pause things just for a moment.
for the sun. Yeah. Bear with me, I'm trying to bring this up because it was mind blowing to my side. Okay, this is what I want you to see. Folks, check this out. Make sure you can see this. While well, waiting for the last video, it's gone. Graduates. My soft skin secret. Oh, sorry. Stupid commercial. Graduates of high college program are earning 200000 right out of school. Listen, what can you all see what I've just got there? It's very competitive to get in a Carnegie Mellon. Carman, Carnegie Mellon University of Pittsburgh is spinning out graduates earning 200000 on self-driving cars. It's the unofficial self-driving car research. At least four companies, have been, including them, have set up in the city. Said the, graduate, uh, the graduates of computer vision programming, jetting operators from firms, pay workers up to 200 right out of school. 200,000 folks and 22 years old. College computer science and engineering is always ranked highest paid, but it's fairly rare for an engineering science to major earn over 100, 100,000 right around graduating, let alone 200 grand. All right. Right now, 2,000 computer fission experts are working there now. 200,000 folks. Uh, put that in perspective. If the average salary is like fifty-eight thousand dollars in Charlotte, I saw somewhere around a number like that. That's four times. That's nearly four times that. What are your thoughts on that? One person said, cool, I would hope to tell you, folks, that is really, now. Pond's towelettes, they're the only wipes with I cold cream technology to that. remove my toughest makeup while instantly hydrate. Great. Let's go back over here. So, anyways. I'm going to feel like that. Cool. Absolutely. Think about it. Your friends that want to be doctors? They gotta go to school for ten more years. At, at two hundred thousand, if you banked, you lived with the normal person in Charlotte lives on fifty six k. You you gotta pay taxes, but you'd still be able to bank almost a hundred of it. You'd be a millionaire by the time you're thirty. All right, so then here it is. Since this scrapes is what's running on this map, that's what you'll see when you finally do get it running. Don't be shocked. For preferences, and I will load this up later for you, enable key equivalent under X11. Go ahead and do these. Enable syncing. Do all this. Do those preferences for if you're a Mac user. Zooming in as the mouse scroll will. Good, you're going to computer engineering, excellent. Now, when you start using this stuff, we need you, well, let me know how many people now have Inkscape up and running before I go on another moment further on this. Nice, just about everybody, great. Oh, well, another point on uh, self-driving cars, electric cars. Electric cars will be the dominant vehicle by 2040, which seems like a long time away until you realize that's 23 years from now. They will replace, they will be dominant because countries like China and India are pushing it so hard. Um, I think by 2030, VW, all of its cars will be electric. So there's a big force on that. Absolutely, Colin. Design and build them. Awesome. All right. 
So here we are. Everybody, if you haven't started the Inkscape then, start it up. And you're still waiting on yours, just watch this. We'll have it recorded for you later. You can come back and try it. So you're going to create a document. So you go under File and do Document Properties on there. Then make sure once you create that, change your units to inches, inches, and make it dimensions 30 by 20 inches. Okay, and then once you've got those dimensions, now this dimension can change depending on what we're cutting, but that's the size of a big laser cutter in our lab, so that's why we use that. These, so we should talk about this. Let me bring up my version of Inkscape here, and I'll bring up mine. I'm going to show you in both places. Notice the X one's coming up here and here. I don't know if you'd be happy or glad, but I think next year the lab will be PCs. I think we're moving away from Macs. I'll remind me later on that. The X chords there, where's my Inkscape? And of course, always something. Let me go ahead and pull that over there. Hopefully this will pop up during my lifetime. Interesting. Uh, I sometimes hidden behind there, so I gotta see if my inkscape's down there. Let me sh shrink down. Yeah, of course, I have all these windows coming up now. Apologize. HTML. That's the only thing I don't like about Steam. Once you get it on there, it doesn't want to go away. And they need it for something else. All right, let's see where this is. If you can't get it to open, there's another trick. Do this. Watch. I'm going to go ahead, look for bear.svg. Go to here. I'm going to video image. If it's an SVG file, <laughs> of course. One SVG and it. it's not an SVG. Bear with me one second, folks. There it is. So I'm going to say that that's not. Put it over here. Now I want to start this up. That's not an SVG. Did something what the view image save image as cancel. That's when people miss the label files. That's annoying. Let's try another one. Save image as.
I don't go into the other options. I was hoping I would avoid the option where I have to go to. <laughs> I can't catch a break right now. Oh, well. Sorry, guys. Let's go over here. We'll go in the bear images, settings, advanced search. This is a reminder of how you get SVG files. Any. There it is, it finally popped up. Finally, mine took forever. I don't know why it popped up, but there it is. Hooray. All right. Yep, all right, here we go. So, real quick, file, document properties. We're gonna go to inches. Inches, 30 by 20, okay, hit X, all right, so there we are, 30 by 20, if I go over here, I'm going to pull this over on this side, and move these over here a little bit more, go to this window right here, will help me get around, so you've got three little windows, these, they may be up on top, or they'd be over the side, and they allow us to it. Then, if you look over here, you have your selector. This is for editing note, pass and notes, which we said is made by it. And we can sculpt. We don't really use this here it's for zooming in on something. But here's those rectangles. Now, let me tell you something. This is an object. That's an object. That's an object. These are objects. Okay? But so is a path. Sometimes you're going to find that sometimes you have to take this object stripped. See how this object right now has width, height, and this RX and RY. And we can change those. We bend the right curve on it a little bit, bend it back down. And go ahead and do this. Everybody bring it up. And everybody do this for a second. Raise your hand once you've got the square. Notice when it's, when it's the square and you click on the square, you've got these corners. If I click on a pointer, it doesn't tell me that anymore. It's width, height. If I go here, it just tells me the location of it. Raise your hand once you've got those corners. We've got most people don't, so... I don't want to go too fast here. Go ahead and raise your hand once you've got those corners. All right, great. Come on, Cohen, Liam, Tail, raise your hand if you got them. Okay. Now, here's something that's really important. Fundamental understanding. This is an object. This is an object. This is an object. This is an object. Right there, if I put that rectangle on it, you can change those corners. However, everything is made up of paths. Sometimes, when you want to manipulate these, you need to convert it from an object to a path. And what that really does is it strips it out of there's none of that corner information. The code for it is very pure. So it's really helpful. Say you have this, I make another square, I make an object to path. What I can do to that, I want to learn more about it, is we move this over like this. Now I can do this to it. Select them both, do object to path, and do difference. And it eats a chunk out of there. You need so that you can't do that necessarily all the time if it remains a rectangle. So just understand the difference. These are all objects. A path is an object, right? But we sometimes take every object and we turn it into a path. And then we can do unions, difference, and accession. You can do all kinds of funky things, all right? So, for example, you can also take the same rectangle here. I'm going to go down with that, convert it to a path, object to path. 
What the heck happened there? I did something wrong. Try again. I did something wrong. No, let's do it this way. No. So I take this. I make that on this path. Hold on, let me go here. Object to path. I put them in together like this. Let me explain why this is important. In fact, let me change the color of this one so you see. Go up to object, fill stroke. I'm going over here. Let me move this over so when I record this later, it will show up. I have to go. So I go to fill stroke on that one. Go to fill paint. And we're going to go ahead and make this yellow. All right, make sure that's object to path now. Now, say, and this is why this is all so important, why I'm getting so wound up about this. If you cut this with a laser cutter right now, it would cut this square and these two, when indeed you want the whole thing to be one thing. And that's why, put the pointer and go like this and go path union. Now, it's one whole thing. Now your laser cutter will just cut out on the union. So we can use that to cut in or out. But just graphs. These are all objects. We sometimes have to convert these objects to paths, especially when you want to use union, difference, and these other, co other combines, okay? Any questions on that? That's a little bit of a Oh, that makes sense. Good. People are following that. That's great. This is why sometimes you watch a video on how to make tab boxes and stuff doesn't work. See, it doesn't make that really clear. I've got to record a new video to go right through that. All right. And again, in this case, the laser now will all cut on the outside. So it'll cut that notch or it'll be a way for you to combine things. So you've got an Arduino here, and it's tabbing into a board. I'm just saying, it'll all cut out. If you didn't, if you drew this box, and we drew another box, I'll change the other box to red. All right. And even if I wanted to combine, I won't do that. Come on. I have another smaller box. If I wanted to combine these boxes, the laser cutter, because of the outline, remember we have the fill, that's inside, and the outline, which they call stroke, corral, draw, calls outline. That's what you'll see on our laser cutter. See how that is? That's the issue. Does that all make sense now? I've spent this much time on it because it's that important, because sometimes to do some of these other things will drive you crazy. Once you've made it into an object, too, here's a great thing. You can go into here, and now we can start pulling these corners around. We can reduce nodes. We can do all kinds of things with it. Notice there's no nodes going through here. When I go here, say this rectangle one, watch. There's no nodes in this one. Look at the nodes. There's none. But here, there are. Hope that all makes sense. What recording software? Uh, I was uh, what? What do I use? Uh, webinar uses its own go-to webinar, and then I back it up with uh, Streamflow for my Max. All right, now we've got that. Okay, so with this in mind, let's go back to our webinar. Here we go. Hang on one second. Go back. Uh, 
There's the one I want. All right, so remember, these are objects, but you know, sometimes you need to convert them to paths. On this rectangle object, you know, you draw a rectangle like we've always done, and that's why I went into it. But we worry about fill and stroke. Fill is in the inside, strokes on the outside. And that would be, this is the fill, this is the stroke. It's the stroke we use to cut it with the laser cutter. Fill is probably, if we're using that, we use it to engrave. Now, you can click down here. But I've never found that really super great. I like using fill and stroke, using shift, control, left. We'll bring it up. And that's what you saw earlier when I was changing the colors. The fill here is a dark blue. The outer edge is a dark green. Let me do this right now. See how I'm... How's my pacing for earlier? When I'm teaching in a classroom where I can see your eyes, I have a better idea on my pacing. All right. All right, we're 69. I'd like to get past... Really, we'd like to get 80% before I close polls. All right. All right, 77. 85. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Share results. I always do. There it is even if I don't like it. All right, now. Remember, and this is crucial, that stroke style, more than the paint or anything, has to be point zero zero one. All right. Also make sure opacity is set to 100%, not zero, and blur is at zero. So be sure opacity is not 100%, blur is not zero. So you've got fill and stroke, that's fill. It gets the outcome that we're going to fill in here. Stroke paint. We generally use red, but with color mapping, you can use lots of other colors and thickness, 0 0.001. And now you can draw ellipses and stars, which you know you grab and pull. I hardly ever do. Um, the selector tool, that's what we use mainly. And you can click on the shape with select tool across the handle where you can move, scale, or rotate. So let me go up here with my Inkscape. So if I go up to this one, we use more than anyone. Anyone. All right. I can turn it around. That's see that. So I can do things like grab it, make it bigger. All right. So those are all different things I can do on this. All right. And over here up in the top, you can do things where you flip them. See up here in the top row? Flip them back and forth. So grab an object, play with it up here, use those eight points, see how you might use that. Nope, I have not, Liam. Okay, I'll try it. Hey, um, keep your in your thoughts and prayers to Caribbean islands tonight. They're going to get hit by another bad hurricane. Having gone through a class five, they're about to get hit by Maria, which looks like it's going to be the same thing again. Hey there, Liam. Okay, so you've all played with that. Let's go back down here to my PowerPoint so I stay on task. Hold down control while moving to, to, to restrict movement to either horizontal or vertical. You can grab any handle to change the scale. You can hit control to preserve the ratio. Double click it and you can start rotating it. So, so in other words, I wasn't doing this yesterday, but let's, let's try this. Whoops. See how that is? And command on a Mac, you can start. Come on, Tom. 
See how that is? We can rotate it when you do it that way. All right. Okay. Let's go back over here. All right. Also, with the selector tool, you can tell exactly where you want, as well as the width and height. And that's just a fancy way of saying, we saw this earlier, right up there, the X and Y, width and height. All right, then, Using these, you can move objects behind and front of other objects. So let's go back over here. So if I take this, I can do this where I bring it up to the top. You see how that's now behind it? I'm putting that one at the very bottom. If I move that on top, it'll be in. So it's all, it allows you to bring things forward and put them behind. So what's covering what? Now I can get the circle to go over top of that. All right. Don't use that a lot, but sometimes you do. Sometimes you're trying to make things work. Make sure they're both on the same top home level. If you try to do one of these features and it doesn't work. I.e. Um, this union indifference. That's something you use a lot, frankly. When you're out there using laser cutter a lot. All right. All right. All right. Now, a cool trick that we can do on this is, and generally duplicate, folks. Don't copy. I think duplicating is where you want to really go. But here we go. Um, let's look at this. Can I get everybody now to go back to Inkscape, please, and do file? Let's get everything else out of here. We can just delete this all off just for a second. Draw a rectangle. Make it any color you want. Then get another rectangle that's a different color. And I'll tell you what, what we're going to do is go to Object, Fill and Stroke. And we're not going to really worry about cutting this with a laser cutter, just for expedience so you can see what you're doing. So here's this one. I'm going to turn off the fill, stroke paint. There's a blue green on this one, but stroke style, I'm going to make it so I can see it. 0.11. We see that? And then I'm going to make it bigger. Raise your hand when you've done that. Raise your hands when you've done that. I'll go through it again with you. I'm going to do another box, show you just what I just did. Put in the fill and stroke. I took a rectangle. I drew it out. I then, it had a fill in it. Let's say it had the fill again. It was red. Stroke was green blue. The stroke was 0.001 on it at the time. So you really couldn't see it very well. All right. So what I did, went to my pointer here. I said, fill. Turn that off. Stroke paint. I left it that color. You can make it whatever color you want. Stroke file, I increased it to an inch, 0.1. So I ended up with this. Once I done that, get rid of it. Raise your hand once you have that going, folks. Ask questions if you don't know how to do it. Let me show you some tricks here with this. Great. Come on, Jean-Marc, Hannah. 
Abigail, Kayla, oh, those guys are getting it. Good. Harry, Cohen, Levi, Liam, William. Go ahead, raise your hand so I know to go on once you've got them. Good turnout. That away for everybody coming tonight. All right, so then we have this. I got some folks that aren't raising their hands. I can't figure out if they can't raise their hands. They don't know what they're doing. They're not paying attention. So let me know if you're struggling or something. I'm looking down at the question too. Can you repeat one more time? Rectangle. Draw it out here. Now, when you're going to draw yours, there's a good chance you're going to have a fill in it. There's the fill. You got stroke paint. Can be any stroke paint. I don't care what it is. And... If you've done this with me in the past or in one of our computers at school, you might have a width on this edge of 0 .001, which you can't really see. So if I go to my fill, click on this X, I got rid of it. I want to see the stroke style, so at least increase it so you can see up the blue line. I'm going to delete it now. All right. Now I'm going to take this, delete it, and I'm going to make another rectangle. And this time make the rectangle red. So we're going to make sure that red paint, all right, so it's red. All right. And I'm going to make this stroke paint. I'm not, I'm not even worried about this, but we'll leave it there. Okay. Stroke style, I'm going to make it a little smaller. But it can be, all right, there you go. Doesn't matter. So here's what I'm going to show you. If what you can do with this for aligning things, and this is a powerful tool. We're going to sit here, we're going to grab both these. Then I'm going to go under Object, Align and Distribute, which I'll bring over here so everybody can see it. It's relative to the page, I'm going to say put it center on the vertical axis, horizontal axis. So I now move this to my page. And if you use the little hourglass, you're going to see this is in the center of the page. It's a great way to use the computer to line up your stuff. All right. Now, I can also do that where I go left of the page. I can go top of the page over there. Whoops, right in the middle again. Let's do this. There you go. And I'm right off the outside of this. Now, Let's edit undo that one because that won't do what we want it to do. All right. Now, but what happens if you say, I don't want to do it there. I want to line on this box here. That's where we say you can do something like this. The largest object, biggest object, smallest object, or first selected, last selected. So say, let's get out of this. I select this one. I hit my shift key and I select the other one. Now, it's not going to do relative. I'm going to not select relative. I'm going to do last selected, for example. And I'm going to say put it there. That's going to move the red dot down. Challenge yourself. See if you can get this red dot to go box go all the way around your square. There it is there. There it is there. There it is there. There. I was able to do it. I'm putting everybody's hands down. Try to do that. That's useful when you want to line things up and get it dead where you want it. All right, Liam Nadell, you don't know what you're doing. Well, Liam, show me at what point you don't know what you're doing, but I'm glad you're telling me that. Good news to tell me that. So click on the rectangle, draw it out there. Can you get it to do that? Can I put you on so we can talk about it, bud? Lane, I'm going to unmute you if I can.
Liam. Hey, Liam. Hello. All right. Do you see the? Do you know how to draw the rectangle? Well, yes, I've drawn the rectangle, but I think I have a very, I have a pretty old version of Inkscape. So what's happening is, um, I've drawn it, and then I went to fill and stroke. Yeah. So I go to stroke paint. I pick out a uh, color, and what? then I will click the flat color box under stroke paint. Now I just do this. Wait a minute. Let me see. I one second. So I can see what. Let's look at it together. So I can see. So you got the fill, right? Yes. Does it look like what I've got on my screen right here? Um, the fill, yeah, the fill looks like that. Okay, so just take the top one and just pull it all the way out there. So it's two fifty five. So it fills in two fifty five. All right. Yeah, it filled. Does it fill? It's filled. All right, then go. It's to filled with the color of red. All right, then go to stroke paint. I don't care what stroke color. Paint. Yeah, right up there. You got fill. Then go to stroke paint. Do you see that? Yeah. I have stroke paint. And then select two colors there. Don't care what of the RGB. I have selected two colors there. And then stroke style, make sure it's like 0.11 or something, not 0.0. Mine is set to point, is mine is, my width is set to 1.0 PX. That's pretty thick. And remember, you have to I set, I know what your problem. Can I, tell, no can, can I tell you why? Your sure. document properties need to be set to inches. Okay, That's so I'll go real. to, um, I yeah. think I go to um, uh, document, edit. Listen, listen, go to document properties, as we showed earlier, go to document properties, change this to inches, inches, and make this 30 by 20. Okay, bud? Inches, sure. Inches. Um, Up here, inches there, 30 inches by 20. And 35 and what are the dimensions of the width and height? Look at my screen. 30 by sure. 20. 30 by 20. Okay, bud? 30 by 20. Okay. That's what was messing you up. I'm going to mute you now. Got it. All right. So it's really important because we don't use in pixels in here, not with a laser cut. But raise your hand, folks, if you're able to do that. Again, let me show you how to translate it around. Do last selected, make it the big square, or you can even do biggest object. It doesn't matter. It will move around and then use these to kind of move around and associate the square. So, all right, now I'm probably, okay, let's go here. Let's go here. That's the last selected. In the middle of that one, horizontal version of that one, at the bottom outside of it you can go all the way around the outside now I'm up on that so I'm right now now I got to get back inside of it it doesn't want to be inside anymore so I go to that using that inside okay raise your hand if you got that done folks it's about that time I realize it all right. Okay, good job. Now, we're going to be using many of those techniques uh, for doing some, um, is this ability right here, and then we'll stop. I just want you to see it. Whoops, that was not what I wanted. All right, once you get a line distributed, you can do things like this parametric design, which you can play with a little bit later. All right? And then we'll get into laser cutting and all that good stuff next. Let me go ahead and do a couple of quick polls, and then we can get everybody. Hey, did you, did you come to the last webinar? All right, let's get the 80 cent vote, and then we'll end up the poll. We're at 69. Please, everybody vote so we can all... Your, your peers can uh, get done. They might have other homework or whatever. Everybody's so busy these days. I'm at 77%. A couple more people vote, please. Still at 77. Someone else vote. Right, it's not my favorite. I'm going to leave it at 5 for 77 just because we've got a couple other polls asked. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right.
30% didn't come, so make sure. I'm glad you came this week, so keep coming to these things. It's much better. Um, how'd you enjoy the last lab? We had people out here Saturday. We had a bunch of, uh, I think that was middle school, but they were out uh, two Saturdays ago at 62%. 75%, 83%, 90. All right, thank you for everybody voting. Close the poll, share results. I think that went pretty well. I think you enjoyed lab. I think you're going to really like the mirrors and the projects we have coming down the road for you. All right, and the last one. How'd you enjoy this webinar? 33% voted, 50, 83%. Five, four, three, two, one. Closing the poll. Share results. Thank you, everybody. 82%. Again, any suggestions to make it better? I'm really open to hearing. Um, with that in mind, just whatever. Let's see if it's, I'm not sure this one recorded. The other one's recording. We'll post the webinars a little bit later. You'll have most, we're planning for Tom DeToy to be tuning the webinar Wednesday. I will see you starting next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, we'll have a lab. For those that come out on, on Thursdays, we have our lab next Tuesday. Not tomorrow night, next Tuesday. Thank you very much. You all have a great evening. Bye-bye.